the serene expanse of Colorado's rugged landscapes, the tale of Michelle Ray Vinick unfolds, a narrative that has captivated the imaginations of many and left an indelible mark on the community of outdoor enthusiasts. Michelle, at 35 years of age, epitomized the spirit of adventure and the profound love for the natural world. A mother to four children, she balanced her family's responsibilities with an unwavering passion for the outdoors. Climbing and hiking were not just hobbies for Michelle, they were essential threads woven into the fabric of her identity, ways to immerse herself in the tranquility and majesty of nature's offerings. Her love for adventure led her to seek challenges that would push her limits and to allow her to experience the exhilaration of conquering nature's formidable peaks. Yet, it was her underlying spirit of exploration that set the stage for a journey from which she would not return. On September 24th of 2005, Michelle, accompanied by her friend Eric Sawyer, set out to ascend Mount of the Holy Cross. This mountain, standing as a sentinel with its elevation of 14,005 feet, presents a formidable challenge even to the most seasoned hikers. It is a peak that has etched itself into the lore of Colorado, not just for its daunting height, but also for the natural cross that adorns its facade, a feature that has intrigued and inspired countless souls. The day of their expedition dawned with promise, yet... It harbored an underlying mystery that would soon engulf Michelle's fate in the shadows. As they embarked on their ascent, the air was filled with anticipation of the climb ahead, a year-long dream finally coming to fruition. Little did they know, this journey would etch Michelle's name into the records of unsolved mysteries, her story becoming a haunting testament to the unpredictability of nature and the human spirit's quest to conquer it. As a triathlete, Michelle had conditioned her body and mind to endure, to overcome, and to triumph, whether on the track, in the water, or against the incline of a mountain trail. Her love for the outdoors was matched by her enthusiasm for climbing, a hobby that brought her not just physical gratification, but a deep connection to the natural world. This connection was something she sought to share and celebrate with those around her, a shared experience that brought her closer to friends and family alike. Eric Sawyer, Michelle's climbing partner on that fateful expedition, stood as a contrast and a complement to her adventurous spirit. An experienced climber, Eric had successfully navigated numerous summits, his resume boasting a sense of 38 of Colorado's storied 14ers. His relationship for Michelle was grounded in a mutual respect for the mountain and a shared ambition to conquer it. Together, they had planned this climb for over a year, a testament to their dedication and the trust they placed in each other's abilities and judgments. Their dynamic was one of mutual encouragement and support, a partnership that promised to carry them to the summit of Mount of the Holy Cross. With Eric's experience and Michelle's athleticism, they approached the challenges with confidence, unaware that the journey would unfold into a narrative steeped in mystery. On the morning of September 24, 2005, Michelle, Ray Vanek, and Eric Sawyer geared up with the essentials for their ambitious climb. They were poised at the threshold of a journey that would etch this date into the chronicles of the unexplained. Their target was the Mount of the Holy Cross, a formidable giant among the Colorado Rockies, revered not only for its daunting elevation, but also for the natural crucifix that it bore, a beacon for climbers and seekers alike. However, the day's promise was shadowed by a series of initial missteps that would later haunt the narrative of Michelle's mysterious disappearance. Despite their meticulous planning, Michelle and Eric inadvertently set off on the Halo route, a decision that steered their expedition towards unforeseen challenges. Renowned for its rigorous demands and treacherous terrain, the Halo route was not what they had intended to confront. Yet, faced with the realization of their mistake, they pressed on, driven by a year's worth of anticipation and the unyielding allure of the summit that laid ahead. As they ascended, the mountain revealed its merciless nature. Michelle, despite her athletic prowess and triathlete conditioning, found herself grappling with the altitude's unforgiving grasp. The thin air began to exact its toll, manifesting in headaches and a fatigue that clung to her steps, each breath becoming a battle for equilibrium. 
The pair reached a critical juncture when, just 400 yards from the summit, the mountain's invisible weight became insurmountable for Michelle. With the peak almost within reach, she made the harrowing decision to halt her ascent. Her body and spirit had given in to the altitude's relentless force. Eric, faced with his partner's distress and the summit's call, found himself at a crossroad of loyalty and ambition. After a moment of contemplation, he chose to pursue the final stretch alone, leaving Michelle to wait amidst the boundaries that speckled the mountain's face. The decision marked the last known sighting of Michelle, a moment frozen in time, where words and glances were exchanged, unaware of their finality. Eric pressed on to the summit, leaving behind not just Michelle, but the last known evidence of her presence on the mountain. The silence that followed was profound, preserving its secrets with Michelle's fate within its embrace. As Eric ascended the remaining distance, the mystery of what lay ahead was overshadowed by the mystery of his friend that he left behind. As Eric descended from the summit, the triumph of reaching the peak was swiftly overshadowed by a growing sense of unease. The agreed-upon rendezvous spot, where he expected to find Michelle waiting, was hauntingly empty. His calls for Michelle, carried by the wind, met with no response but the mountain's indifferent silence. With each step that failed to reveal her presence, Eric's concern deepened into alarm. The realization of Michelle's absence spurred him into immediate action, retracing their path in a frantic search that only confirmed his worst fears. Michelle had vanished. The gravity of the situation prompted Eric to alert the authorities, sending into motion a search and rescue operation that would quickly escalate into one of the largest in Colorado state history. Within hours, the serene wilderness of Mount of the Holy Cross became the epicenter of a massive human effort to unravel a mystery that the mountain seemed determined to keep. Rangers, officers, and helicopter crews were deployed. The community's response was overwhelming, with hundreds of volunteers joining the search, driven by a collective resolve to bring Michelle home. Despite the extensive resources mobilized, helicopters scouring from above, ground crews combing through the rugged terrain, and scent dogs tracing every possible trail, the mountain yielded no clues to Michelle's whereabouts. The initial absence of any trace was perplexing. No backpack, no shoes, no signs of distress. The mountain, vast and impenetrable, seemed to have swallowed her whole, leaving behind a silence that echoed with unanswered questions. This bewildering lack of evidence only deepened the mystery of Michelle's disappearance, casting a shadow over the exhaustive efforts of the search team. As days turned into weeks, the hope that had driven the operation faced the relentless reality of the mountain's secrecy. The Mount of the Holy Cross, for all its majestic beauty, held its secrets tightly, leaving those searching for Michelle to ponder the unfathomable. How could someone vanish so completely in the presence of so many determined to find her? As the search for Michelle intensified, the mountain began to yield fragments of a narrative, each more mysterious than the last. Two days into the exhaustive efforts, searchers stumbled upon an unsettling clue, a duffel bag and a shotgun, abandoned and seemingly out of place in the wilderness that Michelle had vanished into. This discovery prompted a ripple of speculation among the search teams and the wider community, introducing a sinister undertone to the already mystifying circumstances of her disappearance. In another unexpected twist, reports surfaced of a man who seemed to shun contact with others, choosing instead to conceal himself behind trees, refusing the calls of others to show his face. This bizarre behavior only added layers to an unfolding mystery, leaving more questions in its wake. The presence of this elusive individual in the vicinity of Michelle's last known whereabouts added a human element to the speculation surrounding her fate, a factor that complicated the narrative of a simple disappearance and introduced the possibility of foul play. Amid the sprawling search operation, another chilling discovery was made. Traces of blood in the snow, the blood, found without any discernible context or explanation, became a focal point of speculation. The absence of follow-up analysis on its origin left a gaping hole in the investigation, a piece of the puzzle that remained frustratingly out of reach. Was this blood connected to Michelle, or was it an unrelated anomaly in the wilderness? 
the lack of definitive answers only served to deepen the mystery in this case. The search also brought a man to light named Peter Martin. Encountered by the search teams, Martin's demeanor was marked by resistance and evasion, his unwillingness to engage raising suspicions among those involved in the rescue efforts. His presence on the mountain, coupled with his obscure behavior, cast him as a figure of intrigue in the narrative of Michelle's disappearance. The search team's interaction with Martin were fraught with unanswered questions. Each of these discoveries, the abandoned items, the fleeting encounters with a man in the shadows, the unexpected blood, and the mysterious Peter Martin wove together a narrative of clues and suspicions. Yet, for all their potential significance, they failed to illuminate the fate of Michelle on that September day. Instead, they stood as cryptic signs in the wilderness. In the wake of the clues and the absence of concrete evidence, theories and speculations swirled around the disappearance of Michelle. The community and authorities alike grappled with various scenarios, each attempting to piece together the fragments of the story that the mountain refused to relinquish. One prevailing theory was foul play, a notion that gained traction with the discovery of the shotgun and the encounters with individuals whose behavior seemed to defy innocent explanation. This theory suggested that Michelle might have stumbled upon something or someone with malicious intent, leading to a tragic outcome. The presence of the unidentified man and the mysterious Peter Martin in the vicinity where Michelle vanished added fuel to these speculations, suggesting a sinister human element at play in the wilderness. Another line of speculation pointed toward an accidental death due to natural elements. The rugged and unforgiving terrain of Mount of the Holy Cross, coupled with Michelle's reported struggles with altitude and fatigue, suggested a scenario in which she might have succumbed to the harsh conditions. This theory contemplates the possibility that Michelle, disoriented and weakened, may have fallen or suffered a fatal injury, her location obscured by the dense wilderness and the mountain's vast expanses. Investigators, sifting through the evidence and weighing the theories, lean towards the likelihood of Michelle encountering a fatal mishap caused by the natural challenges of the mountain. Without conclusive evidence, the narratives woned by community members, authorities, and the media serves as attempts to make sense of a situation that defies easy explanation. In a dramatic turn of events nearly two decades after Michelle Ray Venick vanished without a trace, a weathered hiking boot was discovered in the wilderness south of Vale, casting new light on the enduring mystery of her disappearance. The boot, identified as Michelle's, was found propped against a boulder, its leather ravaged by time and the elements, yet unmistakably hers, purchased just a day before her ill-fated hike. This solitary piece of evidence, the first tangible clue after years of speculation and search efforts, reignited interest in the case. For years, the prevailing theory suggested that Michelle, overcome by altitude sickness and exhaustion, might have strayed off course, leading to a fatal accident in an area far from the initial search zones. However, the location of the boot, found in an area where few venture, north of the summit and below a rocky slope, suggested a different trajectory entirely. This revelation has led to a reassessment of Michelle's likely path on the day that she vanished. It now appears that, contrary to the belief that she might have headed west after getting lost, Michelle likely ventured north, attempting to navigate her way back via a route that her and her climbing partner had not planned to take. The boot's location, far from the originally speculated areas, indicates that Michelle might have been trying to follow a trail-like feature down the mountain, mistakenly believing it to lead to safety. Instead, it led her into terrain that was, unbeknownst to her, seldom traveled and fraught with danger. The implications of the boot's discovery extend beyond the mere fact of its finding. They challenge the understanding of Michelle's movements and decisions in her final hours. Investigators now theorize that Michelle, disoriented and likely in a state of physical distress, inadvertently ventured into a perilous and isolated area of the mountain. This new understanding provides a critical piece of the puzzle in reconstructing the sequence of events that led to her disappearance, offering her family and those who have followed the case a semblance of closure, yet also deepening the mystery with new questions about her last steps. The effect of Michelle's disappearance extends beyond her immediate circle, touching the hearts of the wider community of outdoor enthusiasts and climbers. 
Her story intertwines love for the natural world with the imperative of caution and respect for its challenges. The story of Michelle Ray Vinick, marked by unresolved mysteries, continues to resonate, a somber testament to the allure and peril of the mountains that she loved. It beckons us not only to remember her, but also to learn from her story, to ensure that the spirit of adventure is always approached with an unwavering commitment to safety. In light of the ongoing mystery surrounding Michelle's fate, there is a continuous call to action for anyone who might hold information, however seemingly inconsequential. We encourage you to come forward, and the Eagle County Sheriff's Office remains the primary contact point for tips or insights that could lead to a breakthrough in the case. Their commitment to uncovering the truth stands as a beacon of hope for resolution and closure to what happened to Michelle.